First of all, I want to acknowledge the Ohlone people, yeah. The, yeah. the traditional inhabitants of this land on which we gather, on which we protest, on which we demonstrate, on which we occupy, on which we decolonize. Yeah. Now, I'm very proud to be a part of this massive expression of solidarity with the workers whose exploited labor is the main source of capitalist profits, the main sources of the profits the capitalist corporations have made the center of their universe. And so we are here today to say yes, to people's needs and no to capitalist profit. No to capitalist profit. What is amazing about this movement is that it refuses to be dismantled. The Occupy movement has had its tents destroyed has had its encampments dismantled, yet the ashes that the police and the corporations have assumed means the imminent death of this movement. From those ashes, the Occupy movement has risen once again. Like a phoenix, it rises. Occupy Oakland. Let's talk about Occupy Oakland. Occupy Oakland. Occupy Oakland has played has played a pivotal has played a pivotal role in the development of the global movement. Occupy Oakland has demonstrated that it is possible to build a movement that is opposed to capitalist profits that is anti-racist, that is also feminist. A movement that respects the sexual diversity, the economic diversity, the racial diversity of the 99%. that the 99% are not homogeneous. It's, there are hierarchies within the 99%. I just re received a text before I came today from Barbara Becknell, whom many of you know as the person who represented Stanley Tookie Williams until his death and continues to represent him. She asked me, because she cannot be here today, to make a proposal for your consideration and for the consideration of Occupy movements all over the country. She suggests that at some point in the near future, we decide to declare a national day in solidarity with the 2.5 million prisoners and the 3,500 people who are on death row all over the country. And so what she suggests is that we have Occupy mobilizations at every major prison in this country. Now, before I finish, let me say a few words about the ILWU. Because we're here to celebrate the rank and file of the ILWU for their radical solidarities over the years. Since the port shut down, which I remember, in support of the anti-apartheid movement, since the ports shut down in solidarity with Mumia Abu Jamal, led by, uh, led by Jack Heyman. Many of you remember that. You may remember the refusal of the ILWU workers to unload an Israeli ship 
protesting Israeli apartheid? Now, the association of Occupy Oakland with the most radical sector of the organized labor movement in this country was what made the November 2nd strike so incredible. And that reverberated all over the country. Everybody now knows, all over the world, people know Occupy Oakland. Three weeks ago, three weeks ago, I was in Germany and spent some time at the site of Occupy Berlin. And what they wanted to know, first of all, they wanted to know how Scott Olson was. Everybody is asking about Scott Olson. And then they wanted to know how it is it possible to build a movement that is anti-capitalist, anti-racist, and feminist, a movement that stood up against police violence and racism and militarism and homophobia, environmental violence, transphobia, against capital punishment, and for the abolition of the prison industrial complex. Now today we are targeting both Goldman Sachs and EGT, Export Grain Terminal, and especially uh, Bunga Limited. We're supporting our brothers and sisters who most directly suffer from the union-busting practices of these companies, but at the same time we make connections. Just as we make connections between racism and capitalist exploitation, between the military occupation of Afghanistan and the military occupation of Palestine, between over-incarceration and the lack of education, we also make connections between the financial oligarchies, Goldman Sachs, and the agribusiness companies, EGT, that have turned food production into a profit yielding process. The food they provide us leads to the deterritorialization of indigenous people and African descended people in South America, and it is destroying the environment. And the genetically modified food they offer us is killing us. It is killing us. All for the sake of profit. All for the sake of profit. And so we say people, not profit. We stand with workers, not capitalists. We are for education and housing, not prisons and police. We want love. We want community. We want creativity and we want freedom. Thank you.